So recently I've seen that you guys seem to really be enjoying my videos that are pertaining to grinding and I happen to have just got to level 48 on my Hardcore Warrior which is the level that with the Warrior is the lowest I can realistically go to one of my absolute favourite grinding spots in all of Classic WoW. So it felt wrong to not share it with you all so I'm going to today tell you about how I like to grind in the Nether Guard Keep Mine. Now, there's a lot of pros and a couple of cons to this farm, so let's dive into it, shall we? Firstly, the cons. So, con number one, which is going to be a big issue for the majority of you, I imagine, which is that this farm is exclusive to the Horde. If you go here as an Alliance character, the mobs are friendly, and the mining nodes that make this mine a particularly good farming spot are also not able to be mined by Alliance players, they are exclusive to Horde as well. Beyond that, there is only really one downside to this farm, which is that the mobs do have a Sunder Armor effect, meaning that if you don't kill them quick enough or you're going from mob to mob, you can rack this up, and if you are a melee character, you will find that you will have to take little breaks from mob to mob from time to time, just to let these stacks fall off. But realistically, that's about the only negatives that there are for this farm, and if you can either deal with or get around these problems, then you're in for an absolute treat because the pros list is going to be considerably longer. So let's start with the mobs themselves. There's only three mob types in here that you're going to be farming. There's going to be the miners, the foremen and the engineers. Now the miners make up the majority of the mobs and they are the ones that have the Sunder Armor effect. They are otherwise very simple basic melee mobs without a particularly big difficulty to killing them. And the engineers and foremen don't really have too much, in all honesty, worth mentioning, other than the fact that they don't have the Sunder Armor effect, meaning that if you don't want to stop killing mobs, you can time it so that the Sunder Armor effects, when they need to be dropped off, if you go and kill a mob that is a foreman or an engineer, you can use that time while your Sunder Armor effect is falling off to kill those mobs so you don't have to stop grinding. Beyond that, the drops from the mobs are absolutely fantastic. So. The first thing that we're going to talk about is actually just going to be as simple as mage weave cloth. Now, if you have a use for this cloth, which I dare suggest everybody does, because if nothing else, you can use it for the cloth handings in the towns to essentially get a quest worth of XP for handing it in. But of course, then beyond that, we've got tailoring, we've got first aid, all that good stuff that you all know about. These mobs drop an obscene amount of mage weave cloth. Now, doing this farm on my warrior, I did find that these mobs were particularly tough because my warrior is the bare minimum level realistically on a warrior for coming here. The mobs are equal level to me and I don't really like to do grinds on a warrior of mobs that are higher than me. So this is the lowest I would ever enter the cave. As a result of it being a level appropriate as opposed to green mobs to me, it was slightly more difficult to kill these mobs, especially because I am somewhat falling behind on my gear and I was using mage weave bandages to heal up between mobs. That being said, I was still able to grind out considerably more Mage Reef than I was using, meaning that if I were to stay here, I could easily level up all of my professions, do all of the handings, and that is going to be a big benefit to this grind. Next up, I want to talk about the mining that is available in here. Now, there are a lot of node spawns in here, and the majority of them are going to be Mithril. But there is small thorium veins as well and at this level that's probably about the point your mine is going to be at where you're still primarily probably going to be getting mithril but you are going to be on the verge of getting the small thorium veins now i've fallen behind a little bit on my mining and i'm not able to mine the small thorium yet yet the mithril nodes that are in here were able to get me considerably closer to being able to do so and of course while i'm continuing this farm which i intend on doing for a few levels of grinding mobs here I will of course get to the point where I'm able to get the small thorium and then I am going to be a very happy man. Then beyond that we have the unique aspect to this farm and the reason that it makes it so good in my opinion. And that is going to be the Drathis crystals. Now there is essentially a flawless and an imperfect version of this item. And this item is simply something you turn into an NPC to get a reward. Now there are a few things worth mentioning. The green version the imperfect drathis crystal is going to be turned in and the first one that you get you get a full quest worth of experience for i think it's about 5000 experience you get for handing it in which is no small amount of experience and is definitely going to be a nice little perk to doing this farm 
You will also get a random level appropriate green item in the mid 40s to early 50s, which is absolutely fantastic. And you will get one of those every single time you hand it in. Now, unfortunately, with the green version of this item, the green item that you receive is going to be every single hand in. However, the experience is only for the first one. But, like I alluded to, there is the flawless version of this item, which is a blue. And this is going to give you eight, nearly 9,000 experience on your first hand in. And you will also get a blue item, a blue BOE in the late 40s mark as well. And this is absolutely fantastic because, of course, this is going to be a very nice way of getting a few of those pieces that you need if, like me, you fall a little bit behind on your gear. Beyond that, you also are going to get an additional 5,000 experience should you get more than one and you're able to hand them in as well. Now it should be said that these crystals are particularly rare and in this video the footage I'm going to be showing you is going to be what happened in a one hour farming session here for me and in that one hour farming session I actually didn't get either of these crystals. That being said of course it is just that these are random chance and when I actually came to do this farm this was actually my second attempt to do so. When I first turned up, I basically had someone come to the door and I had to give up pretty much immediately, so I've just left, come back and got the footage again later. However, the very first mob that I killed on my first attempt here to try and get this footage dropped me one of the green variants of these crystals, which I'll be showing you here now. And of course that's incredibly lucky, and then I've also got the footage here where I will go and show you me handing it in as well, and just essentially getting a free green item which is absolutely fantastic. The last notable piece of loot that we're going to talk about is ju actually just the grey items that we're going to get because these mobs are high level and they are humanoid. They do drop some decent grey items in the form of just like weapons that you can vendor and things of that nature. And these are going to vendor for a decent amount. I think I actually came away with about three gold in total from just vendoring the grey items here, which is absolutely fantastic. I will show you on the screen what I started with, essentially like an open shot of my bags at the beginning and the end of this one hour session. And I think it's pretty decent, especially when, I, I'll be honest with you, I think I've had better times grinding here than this one hour session, and I think I was actually quite unlucky. It may just be because my overall kill count was quite low as well, because I was struggling a little bit more on this farm than I usually do when I'm here, but then again, it should be noted, this farm is nice and easy to the point where when I'm actually getting this footage for you, I had Netflix open on the other monitor, I was replying to messages on my phone and basically very half-heartedly doing the grind. And the reason I do this for when I'm gathering this footage is because that's how I expect a lot of people that are doing grinding are going to be doing it as well. So there's no point in me going absolutely all out and trying to get unrealistic figures when it's not going to be representative of what you might achieve yourself. Now, two things that I do want to mention, finally, for closing thoughts on this farm, is that, firstly, mob density. These mobs are very close together, but not so close as to have the space and mob density available for AoE farming, in my opinion. You are probably going to want to do these one at a time. If you are capable of doing more, then what I would suggest is that if you are a mage looking to AoE farm, you want to give this a go. If you can get the pull right, there is a long bridge section that you could use for your AoE farming kill location. That doesn't actually have any mobs on it by default, so if you can get the pull and bring them up here, you would be able to do that. Although, I'm not sure how well that would work. I'm not an AoE farmer, I'm certainly not a merge player, so I would need your input on that one. So if you are someone who's attempted this AoE farming, then please do let me know how you got on. And finally, anyone who's worrying about Terramus the Devourer because this is in Blasted Lands, he doesn't patrol up high enough to get to the entrance to Blasterlands where you will find the entrance to this mine. It's basically as you go over the border from the Swamp of Sorrows into the Blasterlands. The entrance is on your left and Terramus doesn't come anywhere near that. He does patrol around the area where the NPC hand in is for the crystals. So do bear that in mind but in all honesty he patrols such a large area that is so open it's so easy to see him from anywhere you're not going to have any issues with regards to not getting attacked by Terramus, providing that you have a brain cell. But with all that said, I do believe that this is going to be all of my thoughts on this particular farm, so please do let me know if you are familiar with this one or if it looks interesting to you down below. And as always guys, I hope to see you in the next one. Laters.